It's my feel good worthy show. Welcome back, you beauties. Thank you so much for joining the conversation this morning as we kick things off. It's going to be a tough one to chew through, but we've brought in the expert to help us do it. Now, BRICS, an association of five major emerging national economies. We're talking about Brazil, Russia, India, China, and, of course, South Africa has got the world's <clears throat> attention right now, but not for the most positive reasons. Not at all. All right, so we have to unpack this properly. Mm -hmm. The BRICS community is a political and economic uh, bloc aimed at promoting cooperation and development among themselves, but the baggage carried by Russia from the Ukraine war is really tainting the agenda of the group and making itself palpable in the Western powers, demanding South African officials to arrest Vladimir Putin if he lands on South African soil at okay. the next BRICS summit in August. Now, naturally, if you think about the way South Africa has been operating, there's a lot of public worry about <laughs> us having the responsibility of arresting somebody, <laughs> you know, because we have our own issues over here. So how does that all fit into place? How does this work out in uh, the umbrella of BRICS? So, so the author of The Mastery Code, a business speaker, somebody who can analyze this is Llewellyn Devereaux, who we are privileged to have on our couch right now. I, I feel like Llewellyn is really excited about chatting about this, no. this topic. <laughs> okay, aren't you? I, I feel like you're excited about well, it. You had a sip no, of no, water it's, very it's, quickly. No, but the thing is, it's like exciting, it's exciting times. We, we're watching history happen. Yes, but we are. I'm glad you framed it like that, yeah, my friend. So thank exciting. you so much for being here and bringing a little positivity with thank you, you because this speaks to being stuck in there, yeah, getting, no. getting down to the nitty gritty of what the world is about right yeah. now. Yeah. So BRICS has a function. There is a reason why we band it together. What is that agenda? I think it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's the, um, it's a combination of all the emerging markets, like the most powerful emerging yeah. markets, right? And I think we have a different agenda to the G7, like, um, you know, the, the countries, because obviously we, we have different protocols, we have yeah. different requirements. And so the whole thing is obviously to facilitate, like, you know, development, growth, uh, in our own unique way, because, like I said, as an emerging economy, you have different requirements and protocols. We have to do it differently. Yes, you can't, yeah. you can't copy and paste the same way everywhere else. You can't do that. So it's, it, it makes sense for us, especially now, with just understanding just the framework of the whole, how different countries have, like, teamed up together. It's like the Avengers versus, like, DC Comics. Like, oh, you know my what I mean? word. Oh, God. What a great analogy. Oh. I like you so much Like now. Avengers Assemble. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the only yeah. thing Are is we this... the Avengers or DC, uh, though? Come on. <laughs> I hope the Avengers... So, so let's just say, right, with the analogy, BRICS is the Avengers, right? I feel like we brought Thanos into the group now, given yes. the fact that the Ukraine war is yes. tainting this entire community. So now you're thinking, hey, we're all heroes, but in the center, you've got Thanos. We're yes. to do, you know, just snap in the middle and tending the entire community. So what does that baggage mean for BRICS in terms of its credibility and what it now stands for, especially uh, given the fact that it's a bunch of emerging economies coming through? I mean, you know, the BRICS is supposed to be about positivity and ensuring the world can invest in these economies together. Yeah. But now the one R in the middle is causing nonsense. Like, what does this mean now? Well, the thing is, firstly, we, there's a lot of attention around it now. Yeah. Because BRICS has been around for like almost, like almost 13 years now. Yeah. But because of the situation with Putin and everything, that's why there's, there's a lot of attention, a lot of like hoo-ha, and that's all that it is. But for the most part, it's, it's really, I think the world, I mean, normally in terms of like world powers, like if you look at history, they last for a couple of centuries. It's just what it is. Like the, yeah. every currency lasts a couple of, like hundred years, oh, yeah. maximum. Even so it's like, they, I think the world has been waiting to switch. You know, like okay. they've, they're waiting for an opportunity. And this is the opportunity where sometimes you, as a country, America has been like a bit, you know, bullish like over the years, yeah. you know, and I think the countries have waited for the right opportunity to kind of, you know, how, who can come and stand up to these people. And so because of what Russia did with the Ukraine war, yeah. it's created an opportunity now. And now because of that, all the other countries that have been like holding on to their like, yeah. you know, anguish and a bit of like, you know, they, all their, you know, history with whatever they've done with America, yeah. they're like saying, okay, cool, actually, we see what you guys are doing. So uh, all that it's okay. going to do right now is just, it's really going to create tensions, mm -hmm. uh, especially trade. It's, you know, there's a lot of trade sanctions that are going to be, like, be being imposed. Yeah. But what I think is that it creates a new order. A dynamic <laughs> tension. Let me, and I, I use this term a lot, to, it seems, these days, because yeah. it's almost essential when living in the moment that you need a push and a pull to kind of drive that change. Yeah. <laughs> Surely BRICS, by its very nature, speaks to the fact that the developed economies aren't giving the developing economies what we need to develop. So we need yeah. to go to ourselves, yet we go to our friends <laughs> within that developing market, and now we get a slap on the hand and sanctions. Win or lose, how do we approach this? Where is our allegiance? To the future, to this developing growth, or is it to the powers that be in making sure we don't get slapped with sanctions, don't lose that foothold that we've got within the West? How do we approach this? I mean, I, I don't think we, we will leave unscathed. 
Mm. It's all a game of chess. That's yeah, what it is. It's uh -huh. just it's, it's art of war, right? So it's it's the, the idea of, with any international relations. You want to be friends with as, as many people as, as as you want to be. Like it's like China, for instance, still trading a lot with America. Like they're still friends. Yeah. You know, even though they not, might not, not be friends. It's one of those things. Yeah. So it, it really just comes down to looking at our interests. Like every country, you look at your own interests and you go to the world and you trade. But I think for us in our position. It's especially with like the whole thing we spoke about the free trade agreement area. I think, like I said, Africa is at a place where we have to look at our interests now and say, okay, cool, what are we going to do? But I think it's about, it's really about being smart with what, especially now with the elections that are coming in America next year, it's about being smart. Where do you kind of align to? But I think personally is you, you, you have to make sure that you, you're as friendly. Sometimes you can be amicable with some countries. Yeah. Some of them you keep more friendly. But I think the best position is to be try to mitigate the risks as much as possible, but I don't think we can fully be unscathed, especially now with the whole Putin yeah. situation, like in August. Neutral, man. We're neutral, yo. No, we Ish. can't be neutral. We're neutral no, we are Ish. right That's there the at the end of that acronym. We are there. We are the s of bricks, <laughs> so we can't get out of it now. But the thing is, there is a history, and there are implications with regard to the entire world, and we'll unpack that a little later with our guest. But first, let's get back into our workouts here. We've been loving the workout as well. Let's make a racket. 